Another thing is that we have to see our inequalities in the nation and how this higher education, when we reform it, this inequalities in the area of different sectors of the society, we have to take consideration. Then which are these areas? The first area is the regional inequalities. Within the state disparities are there, inequalities are there. You will see the different the hilly area, the coastal area, the river uh, side area and uh, drought affected areas. The, we can see the geographical conditions of the according to that those who are living in a far remote area how to reach the higher education to them or how to include them in this area. Within state also and state wise also disparities are there. Languages is different, the traditions are different, culture is different, even though we have to include them in a mainstream in, of higher education and for that purpose while reforming the higher education we have to consider all these inequalities where we have to make them include and the, we have to finish these inequalities. Another area is the rural and urban area. We have to consider while planning the higher education. Inequalities between the social groups, the caste and categories, religion, gender. We have to see every time when reforming higher education, how these all these sections will be get the opportunity to, to access the higher education. And there are inequalities in the economic groups also, poor, middle class, different schemes will be there so that they can complete their higher education by supporting them, them by providing loan or providing scholarships or any other way. So, while reforming the schemes, by designing the schemes, we have to see their needs by this way they can be in the mainstreaming of higher education. Then what will be the problems of higher education? We have to see it so that we can reform it, contribute into the higher education. The inequality, the inadequate budgetary provision. We see, we are expecting everybody is talking about the 6 percent of the budgetary provision to be for the education, then how we do it will be. And that is why the private sectors are coming into the sector, so that the government will be, we get the support from the private, so that they can bear some expenses of, in the higher education and create infrastructure, provide higher education by their own income and by this way the society will benefit through it. Along with the public investment, the private investment come together and we can achieve the 6 percent government alone. It is their limitations to immediately meet the 6 percent in the budgetary provision to the higher education. Another important sector is that aspect we have to consider regarding the problems in higher education is the, the non-recruitment of the teachers. Even at the policy makers also expected that the student teacher ratio is not maintained in higher education. So, this also one thing we have to consider that. And by this, by how many way we can overcome this problem by availing the teachers? There are so many issues also legal, judiciary, changing rules in the recruitment availability of a quality teachers regarding that, not recruitment policy for few period, then afterwards changing that policy, the, the process of recruitment of teachers, all these are the problems where the higher education is trailing. Another thing is that the fee structure of higher education, fees and day by day the higher education is becoming the costlier as the private sector enters, the cost per head of the student is uh, the key for the deciding the fees. In this line, then this becomes one of the challenge in the higher education. How to available the funding to the students then the educational loan that is also easily available loan to the needy students to pursue their higher education 
is also one of the things we have to consider. And we know that the fee structure is going to change very differently. We have very different fee structures, foreign students, NRI students, out of state student, management quota, merit students, payment seats, regular students, socio-economic students, poverty, below poverty students. There are so many types of different, different fee structures and we need to address all these things very intellectually by collaborating, by sitting together, by modifying the policies and uh, approaches. The fees of different atoms and when somebody is admitting to the college as a teacher, you should be aware of what type of fees are, are actually the student has to pay the application fee, registration fee, lab fee, exam fee, tuition fee, mark statement fees, fees for certification and lot many fees uh, there are. At least the teacher should be aware that when he was student he had paid. But the day by day again he become a teacher and the new fees are introduced. And what type of fees the student has to be pay that uh, teacher should be aware of that. This is the one thing and at your own at least you see the challenge of any admitted student, how many types of fees the student has to pay at the time of the registration. Then we can see that which is unnecessary fee, which is the imposed fee, which is necessary fee, that debate we can do it and find out the way through this. Another the challenge in the fee structuring is that the uncontrolled increase in fees. There are private sectors, there are autonomous uh, institutions and even though the government want to control the fee structure, but there are some new uh, heads are created and through that the uncontrolled uh, fees are uh, collected. And introduction of a self-financing courses, again there are a self-financing fee structure is totally different and it is sometimes very high, then how the affordable poor students, uh, though he is, uh, he is willing to join this CC. And we have to uh, debate on this, we have to come together on this, this and we have to see that and for this purpose I am awareing all of you that what type of fees are there, what type of student according to that fees are different, different fees he has to pay. Self-finance fee structure, how it is different from the regular aid aid fees. Teachers should be aware this course is this in this model that is why we are paying attention of the teachers towards the fee structuring, nature of fees and all this thing. Regarding the recruitment of the teachers, uh, there are so many different types of recruitment are now coming in the names, the contractual, regular, then contractual uh, different different Shikshan Mitra, Shikshan Sheva, there are different names are given. That also, what is the scenario of the uh, of the teachers who are entering into the into the higher education system? Uh, the existing teacher should be aware of this. You may be in one of the contextual or regular mode or any other mode because the as the um, education is in the state and uh, central list both policies the central and uh, state policies are act uh, there enacted there and according to that recruitment is there but we are only saying that the at least what type of the teachers recruitment policies are there. Every time the policies are changed, what are the existing policies, what are the new policies are coming, teachers should be of higher education should know it very well way. Well.